When it comes to creepy ghost girls, few are as famous as the Bloody Mary, a story told to all children, as far as I can tell, across the world of how to summon her. Go into a dark room, light yourself one candle, and stare into the mirror, and three times must you say her name. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. She will appear, and she will take your life. Many do not believe the tale, and thus... They suffer from their own hubris. But is that her whole story? Who is Bloody Mary? What is her lore? Her origins? And is she real? Hi, my name is Kaiser, and if you don't know me, on this channel we dive into fairy tales, folklores, and old legends to just kind of explore all of them. If that's something you sound like you'd be interested in, then hit that subscribe button down below. I'm trying to make it to a thousand subscribers before the end of the year. With all that being said, Let's jump right in. On Halloween, look in the glass. Your future husband's face will pass. It turns out that Bloody Mary wasn't always there. It, the ritual started out as a divination spell. Young women were encouraged to walk backwards in a dark house up a flight of stairs with a candle in one hand and a hand mirror in the other. While they were walking up the stairs, they would catch a glimpse of their future husband's face, or more mysteriously, a skull or the visage of the Grim Reaper, stating that they would die before they were married. Now, this ritual appeared and disappeared somewhere among the earliest 20th century. There is even a postcard, which I just quoted in the beginning of this paragraph, that shows how this vision was supposed to work. Interestingly, upon the postcard is the shadow of a witch in the background, showcasing that even in the early developments of this ritual or this spell, there was some sort of human component to it. Now, I'm going to address the human component later on in the video, closer to the end, but for now, I just want to talk about the curiosity that people have with the future, because at the end of the day, that's what this is. It's a divination ritual. It's something to see what your future beholds. The unknown is incredibly terrifying, and so, throughout history, humans have always sought to try and find what their future might hold. And that's why this kind of thing was popular, specifically in the early 20th century where marriage was all women had to really look forward to. There wasn't much for them because they weren't allowed jobs, they weren't allowed to vote, they weren't allowed a lot of things. And so it was much more difficult to relax when you really couldn't do anything but do housework and wait for some jackass who's probably going to abuse you to whisk you away. So it's not a wonder that people started doing this, but how did Bloody Mary come into the equation? In current folklore, the spell is very similar. You're supposed to do the dark room with the candle, but this time you're supposed to do a chant and say Bloody Mary's name in a ritualistic fashion. Now, I grew up learning three, but upon further research, the number can actually vary wildly from three to 13. In fact, many different interpretations of Bloody Mary are just wildly different things that you summon her for, but I did find a common denominator is to see your future. Bloody Mary can appear as a ghost, as a witch, as a demon, as a smiling apparition. She is sometimes friendly, but most of the time she's depicted as evil, and she is always, like 99.9% .9 of the time, covered in blood, where the name comes from. General term speaking, whenever you do the Bloody Mary ritual, she will appear and attempt to kill you. She'll scream at you, choke you out, curse at you, scratch your eyeballs, attempt to eat your soul or drink your blood. And if you survive her ordeal, then she will bestow upon you the knowledge of your future. However, the legend goes, no one has ever been able to survive. So it is like the story I said in the beginning, people's own hubris that caused them to summon Bloody Mary. But the more interesting part about this, at least in my opinion, isn't necessarily the ritual or the apparition who tries to kill, it's who Bloody Mary was based on. Who is Bloody Mary? Who is this apparition? And it turns out that if we dig deep enough, then we will find three candidates for who Bloody Mary might be, and I'd like to go through those for you now. Mary I of England, born to King Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon, 
uh, is a pretty strong contender. She was born in 1516 and died in 1558. She was the Queen of England, Ireland, and strangely enough, also Spain during her rule. She was also known as Mary Tudor and, get this, Bloody Mary by the Protestants of her kingdom. You see, Queen Mary I was actually a murderous bitch. <laughs> It turns out that if you were even so much as accused of being a Protestant, then Mary would send you to hang or die in some other torturous method during what was known as the Marian persecutions. She killed over 280 Protestants and by the end of her life was very, very, very anti-Protestant to the point where she did not want anyone who she thought might be a Protestant to even remotely think of becoming her successor. Her half-sister, Queen Elizabeth I, was going to be up for grabs and Mary was so distraught and hopeful that she would not take her place that Mary started conjuring false pregnancies with her husband, Prince Philip, King Philip, sorry, King Philip of Spain, in hopes that she could name one of them the successor instead of her half-sister. Now, none of these children ended up coming to life, and unfortunately, by the end of her lifespan, well, unfortunately for her, we would eventually get Queen Elizabeth I. Now, how this could come to be the Bloody Mary of the lore, I'm not entirely sure. As far as I know, the Bloody Mary of the lore doesn't really specify that Mary is the ghost of some queen or otherwise, although we will get into that a little bit later. But if I were to guess, I would say it would probably be built from her revenge, I guess. Not really revenge, more of anger. She's a ghost of anger that really hates the idea that somebody who she doesn't see fit to rule England would eventually come to rule England. Mary had passed away in 1558, of unknown causes, although some historians guess through descriptors of pain that it was either an ovarian Sith or urethrian cancer. Her half-sister Elizabeth I, of course, would go on to rule England, and these days you can find Mary buried in a plot right next to her half-sister. The second candidate for Bloody Mary is Countess Elizabeth Bathory de Esked, or the Vampress of Hungary. And as a really quick side note, if you're a fan of folk music like I am, and you want to uh, hear a song based around Countess Bathory, then I highly recommend you check out Blood Canthus by Caroline. It's an amazing song. I'll leave a screen cap of what the spot thing looks like on screen and I'll, I'll try to link it in the description but it's a great song it's a great song in any case Balthori is considered the world's first female serial killer as well as the most notorious one but we'll get to that in a little bit she was born in 1560 and thought to be poisoned in 1614 she had complained to her bodyguards the night before that her hands were cold where the bodyguard replied it is nothing my mistress please go lie down and the next morning she was found dead. Uh, now, interestingly enough, Balthori was never actually proven to have killed as many people as she did. At least, that's what history says. Supposedly, she and her servants were responsible for the murder of hundreds of young women, draining their blood and feasting on their liver and insides. Uh, they were eventually going to bathe at Bathory in the blood of these young women to keep her forever young. Up until her death, Bathory denied the accusations, and she was arrested in 1612, two years before her death, by, and I'm gonna mispronounce this, so forgive me, <laughs> Georgi, Georgi Thurzo the Palatine of Hungary, in her castle while she was having dinner, along with four of her servants. Now, rumor has it, or a common misconception of history has it, that she was caught mid-torture, but uh, there, there, was no, there was no proof of that. Some documents claim that he found a, that Thurzo, sorry, Thurzo found a dead woman, and with, along with three alive victims, although just barely. During the court cases of Bathory, uh, all of the witnesses that were called forward said that they had heard rumors about these supposed murders, but none of them had actually witnessed anything. And that's the key thing here, is that everything around Bathory was just based on rumors. One of the servant girls named Suana actually claimed that Balthori killed 650 women. And this was the result of her saying that Balthori's court official, Jacob, 
saw the number in a private diary of Bathory's. But unfortunately, uh, this diary never made it to light. And Jacob, during his testimony, also never even mentioned this diary. So where this story came from is probably a figment of her imagination. In the end, Bathory was confined to her castle for the last two years of her life. She wasn't allowed to leave. And so a very common theory, or at least my theory, is that the reason people say that she is the Bloody Mary is because she is seeking revenge on people who falsely accused her. Or alternatively, she actually did it and she's seeking revenge on the people who found her guilty. Now, obviously, we don't know either way, and we never will, because no one is going to invent time travel to bring us back, but if I were to choose between these three candidates, I think Balthori is probably the most likely one of being the Bloody Mary. The third woman is perhaps the one that is most shrouded in mystery. We do know that her name was Mary Worth, but she was either, and this is an insane leap between the two, so bear with me for a second, she was either... Someone who murdered slaves escaping into the Underground Railroad, or a woman who was burned during the Salem witch trials. Now, I tried desperately for at least three days to try to figure out which one Mary Worth was, but every source that I checked continued to conflate what is probably two different women from two different points in history. Now, Interestingly enough, there is a kind of definitive name on a Mary Worth who was known to go and capture slaves that were escaping and bring them back to their southern slave owners. And she was supposedly accused of practicing dark arts and witchcraft, which allowed her to capture these slaves. And whenever she would practice these dark arts and witchcrafts and they caught her, they ended up lynching her in her front yard. And therefore she comes back as Bloody Mary to get killings on people for being lynched. You get the, you get the point. The point is, is that this is probably the more likely Mary Worth because the Salem witch trials are shrouded in misconceptions and lies and mythos. And I mentioned this last week during my Marie Laveau video, but if you want to learn more about the misconceptions and lies and stuff around the Salem Witch Trials, then I highly recommend you check out this video from Kaz Rowe on your screen and will be linked in the description. That goes over them pretty well and a lot better than I can. Overall, the myth of the legend of Bloody Mary seems to be born from people wanting to attach a human element to what was originally originally a divination ritual. My guess is that there was a string of mysterious deaths following this divination ritual, and so a lot of people rushed to do what I said in my Chupacabra video and explain the unexplained. There is a possibility that a lot of people who might have performed this ritual at some point either fell down the stairs and died, or, you know, the dangers of playing with an open fucking flame, or whatever the case may be. Somebody wanted to make this ritual cursed, perhaps to try to stop young, woman, young women from doing it. I have tried in the past on various occasions to do the Bloody Mary ritual and never once has it done anything. But I have also been told by people who believe in these kinds of things that it's because I am male and not female. So if you're out there and you're a woman and you have tried the Bloody Mary ritual, let me know how it went. The thing is though, and what makes me more interested in this entire aspect and the transformation of the ritual and trying to point out famous Marys in history in order to attribute the Bloody Mary to a face is more than likely just the way that people see myths. It's the same thing with vampires, right? And I will do a video on vampires down the road. It's just going to be a long one. But people are obsessed with attaching human elements because humans are real. They're tangible things that we can see. It's not enough to have an unseen force that might kill you if you try to view your future. We have to have someone that we can attach it to because people are so desperate to know what is real. This is one of the reasons that one of my horror stories on my horror story channel, shameless plug by the way, uses goes away from the paranormal for one video and talks only about real humans doing real killings because we as humans relate. This is the reason why true crime podcasts and true crime in general is such a popular 
genre of thing for people to consume. So when it comes to the Bloody Mary mythos, I think that the reason we started attaching Bloody Mary to the original ritual was so that we had a human that we could blame, so that we had someone we could look at, relate to, and say, how could you be such a monster? History is not enough for people. They have to attach paranormal activities to it. But that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the deep dive into Bloody Mary. Today's video was supposed to be on the Wendigo, but there is actually a lot more information on the Wendigo than I originally thought there was. And so it's going to take me probably about three or four more days of research to kind of get all that together. So I took a break from that and started researching Bloody Mary so that I could get you guys a video, you know, this week. Um, and hopefully I'll get the Wendigo video out later this week. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know down below what you think. I love you all so much, and I will see you in the next one.